Yeah, we are. Good morning, Cogdell. Good morning, Leanna. We uh, welcome all of you here this morning and those who are joining us online. Um, we are uh, happy to have you either in person or online to worship with us. Um, our church has an open door policy where we have open hearts open minds and open doors and we want everyone to know that you are welcome here announcements just a uh, today's normal schedule we'll have fellowship time afterwards Stephen ministers meet tomorrow um, Wednesday Bible study group will make a choice because I'll have to already be down in New Braunfels we will have board meeting on Thursday at 3 this, this is the correct uh, Friday Food and Fun. It's second and fourth, so Friday Food and Fun. Uh, Friday at 5.30. Next Sunday will be uh, also a normal Sunday, except we'll be doing our Kids Against Hunger packing uh, starting at one o'clock. So we'll have some fellowship time and then we'll set up the tables and have everything ready. Uh, I got the last little bit of the ingredients while I was up in Fort Worth, and so we are good to go, and we are going to pack the new formula, the, um, the apple cinnamon oatmeal, um, which has apples and a cinnamon vitamin powder, and um, uh, still has soy, but instead of rice, it has um, rolled oats. Um, and so, and it's different measuring cups, so it, it'll, it'll be, be fun, it'll be a new thing, and uh, we're going to pack 10,000 meals, and so we'll do that next Sunday, so please be aware of that, and uh, hope we'll have a good crew. Um, we're inviting our friends from Lakeshore, uh, from Revelation, and from One Fellowship, and so uh, I'm hoping we'll have uh, four lines up and running and, and uh, packing lots of uh, food um, uh, in, a, in a short period of time. So mark your calendar, make sure to be there. And um, yeah, that's, that's all the announcements, unless anyone else has one. All right. Uh, turn, uh, <clears throat> I should say Mer Merle is out uh, with uh, his back uh, is just in terrible shape. I don't know if you saw he was kind of limping on Sunday. And um, so he's not with us today, but Terry Lynn is here, and so she'll be handling all the music, and we're so blessed to have her. But please uh, keep Merle in your prayers and uh, turn your hearts to the Lord as she calls us to worship. Our hymn this morning is um, in the Worship and Song book, number 3116. Please stand as you are able.
Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. With all your heart. serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. With all my standing and join me in the affirmation of faith in your bulletin or on the screens. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in in all all things things we are are more than than conquerors through through the one one who who loved us. us. We We are are sure sure that that neither neither death, death, nor life, nor nor angels, nor principalities, nor nor things things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor nor anything anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ Christ our Lord. Thanks Thanks be to to God. God. Amen. Amen. your neighbor with the peace of Christ.
As we move now toward our prayer time, I want to share with you uh, some celebrations and concerns. Um, ask you to um, be in prayer uh, uh, for those who are uh, recovering and uh, dealing with the changes and health issues um, that we have listed on our midweek prayer list. I invite you to please uh, take a look at all of those. And if you'll add to that list, um, uh, Merle, um, who's having back pain that's radiating down his leg. And um, so please, please keep Merle lifted up in your prayers. Um, I'd ask your prayers um, for my family, um, Sarah's mom, who uh, had just gone on to our prayer list, um, unexpectedly passed away. Um, uh, we think it was a combination of uh, the activation of uh, acute leukemia and maybe a heart um, incident or a, um, a stroke because she had just had hospice by and all of her vitals were normal. And so it's uh, quite, a, quite a shock for Sarah and she's still kind of trying to process through that. Um, Ryder's down there and he'll bring her back today and we'll be here tonight uh, through Tuesday evening. We'll head down on Tuesday evening and the, and the funeral will be Friday. Um, at First United Methodist Church in, no, Thursday at First United Methodist Church in New Braunfels, Texas um, at 1 p.m. And, and I'll be um, leading that service. So appreciate your prayers. Um, good to have the Laternos here. They told, uh, told me they're going to be relocating but not changing zip codes, um, which is, I've done that twice in my life. Uh, uh, those are really fun moves. Um, so um, be thinking about them as they make that change. And uh, also, uh, Dewan told me uh, they unexpectedly had a, a, a death in their family of a cousin. And so please be in prayer for uh, Dewan and all his family. Um, do have some celebrations. Uh, um, my birthday list wasn't updated last week, and we had two birthday boys that I want to celebrate. So Ken Holt and Billy Maxwell um, had birthdays the same day, April 2nd. So belated happy birthday uh, from the congregation. I uh, saw you had some Facebook action uh, wishing you a happy birthday. And so um, happy birthday, Ken. Uh, also, uh, a, a longtime friend of uh, Sarah and I, uh, Brian Smith, um, who has the cancer that's wrapping around his throat and vocal folds. I finally connected up um, and uh, got an update on him. He's doing what I did with the six weeks of radiation. He's uh, had one week and responded very well. And so they're doing the Monday through Friday radiation, then home on weekends to, to Fort Worth. Um, so, and in the midst of that, they squeezed in a daughter getting married. And so it, it's just um, been a challenge. Um, so the wedding, and then this is a celebration that, that he's doing, that he's responding so well to the radiation. So um, celebrate that, but also would ask you to um, continue to, to keep him uh, in your prayers. I got all good reports from my trip down to um, MD Anderson. And uh, we'll continue with the same program and um, prayers that it continues to, 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 to do well. Uh, Conley, you have an update? All right. Okay. And she, she was in the hospital in Colleen? Harker Heights, all right. So Carol's sister, we had uh, prayed for her because your sister and your mom were in the hospital, then just then your mom was released, sister stayed. <clears throat> and is mom doing okay? Okay, <clears throat> so prayers for Carol and family and the passing of her older sister. Thank you. Um, um, okay, um, everything went good uh, in, in, in Houston. Um, <clears throat> I'd appreciate your prayers. Um, I have clocked, <laughs> uh, and, and I'm quitting, 
uh, at least for today, uh, I've clocked 27 hours between Houston and multiple trips to New Braunfels, a wedding, so in the midst of losing Sarah's mom, a wedding up in uh, uh, Weatherford uh, of a longtime family friend, and so it just has been a week. And so um, I, I would appreciate your prayers uh, on that front. Let's pause and um, uh, move into a time of prayer and lift up our own petitions, uh, being mindful of these that were added to one's family, uh, Merle, um, Carol's sister passing. Be mindful of those uh, as we move toward our prayer time and lift up our prayers to the Lord. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, as uh, we are called to and enter into this time of prayer, uh, thank you for prompting us, for sending your Holy Spirit to remind us of those we are connected to, uh, many of whom are carrying heavy burdens. Thank you, Lord, for hearing those prayers and for prompting us to remember them. Our prayers are powerful, Lord, and, and we, we know that, not because of our might or strength, but because of the Spirit. And so we thank you that we can entrust each and every circumstance to you. For those dealing with uh, health issues, uh, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are dealing with change, Lord, hear our prayer. For those uh, walking in the valley of the shadow of death, Lord, hear our prayer. Our midweek list is long, Lord, with those who are waiting on slow healing, with those dealing with countless doctor's appointments, those undergoing treatments. Uh, Lord, um, thank you. Thank you for the ways you wrap your arms around us, that you bear our burdens. Lord, let us uh, be mindful of your kindness to us in the midst of our difficult circumstances. It doesn't mean they don't hurt. But Lord, your presence itself has beautiful healing in it. And so Lord, do that work that only you can do. Thank you, Lord, for this um, special season of the year when we are particularly mindful uh, to, to say hallelujah and amen. Um, for Christ has risen from the dead. And so in this uh, Easter resurrection season, Lord, um, let us keep our eyes and our mind on the truth of that reality, that death does not defeat us. It does not get the final word. It is not our end, that you promise us the gift of new life. You promise us the gift of eternal life. And so, Lord, um, for all whose hearts are heavy with loss of someone they love, um, Lord, hear our prayer and do uh, that work in their hearts and lives. 
Lead and guide and direct us, Lord. We're in the midst of exciting times as a church, um, a, a time of new beginnings. And um, Lord, as we move into that time, we pray we will cling to what is most important, uh, our faith in you, uh, our commitment to be the church you want us to be, that we would not cling to what our preferences are, uh, nor would we cling to the past, but that we would cling to Christ and Christ alone and with him move into this new future you're setting before us. Lord, help us to live by faith and to trust in you and to know, Lord, you are with us. We're we're not alone. And so, Lord, uh, all the glory belongs to you uh, as we seek to be the church you're calling us to be. Again, Lord, we love you. We praise you. Uh, We celebrate your presence in our midst, making... uh, what we do, worship. Uh, As we lift you up, we thank you, Lord, that again and again you fill our cups to overflowing. And on this day, Lord, uh, we know uh, you will again give that gift. Lord, hear all the prayers of your people and this prayer and hear us as we continue praying as Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So we move now toward our offertory time. I'd remind you, uh, present in the sanctuary, there's uh, places at the front and the back of the pews uh, for you to make your offerings and those online. There are listed for you multiple ways for you to offer your gifts. I invite you to offer your gifts and to receive this gift of music as it is offered to the Lord. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind the locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again, he said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive someone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. One of the disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, we have seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands. Put my fingers into them 
and place my hand into the wound in his side. Eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. My Lord and my God, Thomas exclaimed. Then Jesus told him, You believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. The disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs in addition to the ones recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that believing in him, you will have life by the power of his name. The word of God to the people of God. Thanks be to God. This is, in preacher parlance, uh, a very pregnant passage. <laughs> um, there is a, a tremendous amount uh, that is covered in, in this passage, uh, so much so that you could probably preach four sermons off of these verses and, and it wouldn't be like preacher extravagance. It's just there's that much there. So I'm going to deal with just the first few verses and I'm going to do something. Uh, um, I'm, I'm going to continue next Sunday uh, and deal with the Thomas part of the passage because that's its, its own whole thing and I've had some interesting learnings and insights as I've been looking at that part of the passage. So we're just going to try and tackle these first few verses, which of course begins with um, knowing where we are. Um, this, uh, this is uh, the, the first few words say that Sunday evening, and so it's important to understand it's not talking about just any Sunday. Um, it's talking about a specific Sunday, uh, and that's the, the Sunday referenced immediately before this in chapter 20 of what we now call Easter. Um, it was Sunday morning, uh, Mary went to the tomb, empty, runs gets uh, Peter and John, they go there, empty, they leave. Uh, Mary stays, um, looks in and um, gets an odd question from the angels and then turns to leave and thinks she's seeing a gardener, uh, but it's Jesus, he speaks her name, um, and she recognizes him. Um, and, and so again, we get some teaching, and Mary goes and tells this to the disciples, um, and from John, we have from Mary's encounter early in the morning until later that day, before we get any other um, resurrection appearances that are recorded. And so I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to keep plugging away at this. The first witness for hours uh, was Mary, a woman uh, whom a major southern denomination is getting ready to take a vote to say, if any churches have a woman in pastoral leadership in any way, shape, or form, they'll be booted out of our denomination. Um, it, it is astonishing that you can read the Gospels and come to a conclusion that says women should not be in uh, pastoral ministry. So uh, I'm, I, I just, I think it's, it is too often overlooked how significant it was that the first witness to the resurrection was a female disciple. We don't consider her among the disciples proper, the 12, but no doubt um, she was among those who were being discipled 
by Jesus. Um, so th that's where we are. And we've got until this statement where it says that Sunday evening. And now there are two meanings when you say evening. Uh, it can be from three to six, or it can be from six to uh, sunset or sundown. So, it, uh, so you, you've got kind of a window that's larger than I wish it was. Um, but sometime later in the day, the disciples um, are behind locked doors and um, they are afraid. Um, and, and I think it's pretty safe to say they were afraid that what happened to Jesus would happen to them. Uh, it, it, it's not really a stretch to get there um, that they saw uh, and were witnesses to uh, everything leading up to, watching the crucifixion, watching him die, seeing him be buried. Uh, it, it's, it's no stretch that they would have thought this might happen to me. So they're in hiding. Um, if, if you go, um, the, the, the NLT says Jewish leaders, the word leaders is not in the real text. Um, that's there because they don't want people to, to misunderstand because that is where the fear is, but it just says for fear of the Jews. That's just what the text literally says. So you've had all these hours, Mary the only witness, she said something to the disciples, no doubt this prompted discussion because right now, technically all we know uh, about those who we could say believe in resurrection is John who saw the empty tomb and the text says, and he believed. And then Mary who encountered the resurrected Jesus. She went and gave a witness. And so there has to be discussion going on. And I, man, to have heard that discussion, it's like, oh, I know you're gonna say, there's a lot more things that were uh, said and done that aren't included here, but oh, I, I wish I could have uh, been on the editorial committee and said, oh, we're gonna wanna know what they were talking about because you know, it's like, what do we make of this? Because again, at this time, by the cultural standards of the day, you have an unreliable witness. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but that's who Jesus chooses to first appear to. I, again, it's significant. So, so there, I'm sure, uh, contemplating this, and I, I guess somewhere in the discussion, someone said, hey, can, can someone uh, check attendance? And they go and they start checking attendance. Uh, they know they're already down one and discover they're down, no, they're down two. Uh, oh, Thomas isn't here, and we'll find that out later, but Thomas isn't with them, and I, I, this is one of those times where it would be so handy if I could like post Greek text and just show you, because the, it, the passage ends and just says, for fear of the Jews, and then it says, Jesus came, stood among them. I mean, it, that's just all there is, and so the, the NLT adds the word suddenly, it, again, not in the text, but you've got to have something to help you know that this is like there's 10 of them and then there's 11 of them. They're behind locked doors. There wasn't any secret passage. There's 10 and then there's 11. And the 11th isn't Thomas, but it's Jesus. Um, so it, it's... It's, again, John's gospel is the mystery gospel and has all kinds of mystery and symbolism in it. So <clears throat> you, you, you're hiding for fear of the Jews, talking about what Mary said, and there's Jesus. Now, um, we've talked about this previously. When, when there is a heavenly visitation, you'll remember what the first words are that, that almost uh, without fail are spoken. Do not be afraid. All right? That's not what Jesus says. He says to them, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Um, I think that's a, a, an incredible thing. And I'm sitting here um, looking at it in the Greek going, 
uh-uh, I didn't want that. He, I'm reading the Greek words and the English words and going, uh-uh. uh-uh. Um, he did not speak, <laughs> Jewish Jesus did not speak Greek to his uh, Jewish disciples. Not to say he couldn't, he, but he would not have. All right, you understand this. He, he, he would have either spoken in Aramaic or Hebrew, and either way he would have been saying, Shalom. And I think it's very important to understand that's, that's what he is speaking over them, speaking to them. Not, not, do not be afraid, shalom, um, which we translate as peace. And it's a good enough uh, um, translation, but particularly in the rest, western part of the world, we tend to think of peace as the absence of conflict or war. Or, you know, because of our ages, most of us, you know, the 60s and stuff, we think of it that way, kind of a well-wishy kind of thing. Um, but shalom is uh, one of the richest words uh, in the Hebrew language. Uh, it, it means 